everyone, and welcome to 6.5 on the Road. I am here with the team from Broadcom VMware. And let me introduce you to the folks that are on here that we're going to be talking about VMware and TCO models and storage analysis, etc. So introducing first, I'm going to take Tom Nagelmeyer. He is the product marketing engineer with VMware. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Kimberly. Right. And I've got John Nicholson, another product marketing engineer with the same group over there at VMware. Howdy, y'all. And then third, <laughs> and third, I have Mitch Lewis, who is with the Fitzgerald Group and Signal 65, and he specializes in TCO and financial analysis. Welcome, Mitch. Hi, Kimberly. It's great to be on here. And I'm your host, Kimberly Bates. I'm, I'm the Chief Technology Advisor over here at Fitzgerald Group. And what we are doing today is looking at how do you compress storage costs, how modern solutions can lower your total cost of ownership. Um, and this is coming from some real um, deep work that this team has done in terms of looking at what does it look like to deploy a you know, large VCF cluster um, and support that with different types of storage systems and how do you best optimize your storage in that environment. So I want to kick off because the word TCO, ROI, and a lot of other things get kicked around, and um, sometimes it gets a little bit confusing to people. So I'm going to turn to you, Tom, if you would, maybe talk about what total cost of ownership is. How does that differ from price and, and those kind of things? Sure. Yeah, these are, so total cost of ownership and price are things that we intuitively know, but what is, sometimes when we put it into an IT context, you know, it can be easy to, to not understand. So, you know, I'll start out with some simple examples. You know, most things that, that we buy and consume in life, we look at the price and say, well, that's what it costs. You know, anytime you go to the grocery store and you see something on sale there for say $2.99, you know, some, some food that you eat, you know, the price is equal to the cost. I know what my food cost is in life and there's not a lot of total cost of ownership analysis that needs to go into that. But when you start to look at, we say durable goods, things that have costs on top of what you pay, that's when a total cost of ownership analysis uh, can be helpful in, in helping you make a purchase decision. Right, so a great example that everybody uh, knows and thinks about is vehicles, right? Vehicles have a lot of associated costs beyond what you pay at the dealership. So once you get that car home, you have to get insurance for it. You have fuel or energy costs, depending on the type of vehicle you have. There are maintenance costs like oil changes, tires. Um, and then at the end of the day, even the, the residual value, how much you're gonna sell it for can all add up to a what you would call a total cost of ownership. And so when you're looking at, you know, going back real quickly to kind of an IT context, when you're looking at different storage systems, you know, it's very easy to think of, oh, well, I, I there's a certain price or there's a certain dollar per terabyte that I'm gonna pay for this system. And it's easy to forget all of the associated costs that go along with it. When you're comparing kind of a like for like system, you know, maybe those, those kind of heuristics like dollar per terabyte can be helpful. But when you're looking at, vastly different technologies, say a traditional array versus something like a hyper-converged infrastructure, that's when a TCO analysis can really help you make a good decision. So, you know, going back to that, that car analysis, if you're looking at, say, the difference between, say, a, a EV versus a traditional gas car, all of those things that I mentioned beyond the price, like there could be a federal tax rebate for an EV. You might want to put a home charger at your house to make it easier to charge it. Um, the cost for fuel, the cost for maintenance can be higher uh, with one versus the other. You know, so, so when you're looking at different technologies, that total cost of ownership analysis is really going to help you make that best business decision. You know, I go back to a, a partner of mine used to say, if you're going to buy by gigabyte at a price, you might as well buy tape. So <laughs> and it's like, yes, we would give it a chuckle, but the things that go into TCO, are yes there is the capital cost of purchase but there's the maintenance and there's the operational cost and and also the other big area that we're now looking at is the energy cost of what it what that costs but there's also a design design and how that that's implemented and i think that's what we're really talking about here is the implementation here so i'm going to go to our second question which is really looking at the um Components that go into the total cost of ownership in the storage analysis that has been done. Um, and I want to go to Mitch. Mitch, maybe you could give us a little bit about your experience in working with TCO models. I, I know you've been doing this for many, many years in a lot of different environments. 
Yeah, so we've done a lot of this work looking at different storage solutions and um, you know what is the total cost and how can we bottle that. Um, so you know, going back to what Tom said, um, there's obviously these solutions have a price. Um, and that's kind of a starting point, right? So there's uh, going to be a hardware cost and a software cost um, and support costs. And depending on the solution, those are you know either kind of bundled together or maybe they're separated out. Um, but then to get to a TCO, there's other things that you need to add into that. So operational costs of um, what kind of maintenance or management these solutions need, who is doing that, um, how much time does that take? Um, and then you also need to look at the specific features and attributes of the solution. Those can have an impact as well. Uh, things like how they scale, um, you know, how much capacity um, do they have? Um, what features might, um, you know, make management simpler or um, data reduction, those things can all have an impact. Um, and then the other things that get layered on top of this really are time and, and scalability. Um, so, you know, these things change over time. How much are you scaling? Are you scaling up? Are you scaling out? How granularly can you do that? Um, and then when you're looking at time, you know, when are you in current costs? Those can have an impact um, as well as what is the overall life cycle here? So um, this is technology, things do eventually need to be replaced. So in storage, we typically look at um, a five-year life cycle um, and then we're looking at replacing the solution. So um, it's taking all those things and you kind of need to understand how they interact uh, with each other, um, how those things all change uh, the, the cost and you eventually get to um, something that could be um, TCO over a set amount of time. And kind of as a second follow-up, um, we saw some really big significant numbers on the analysis we did, and we're going to be putting a link um, to the report that they have done. Um, there was like a, and I'm going to read off a couple of the items here, so if you mind if I look down, 30% cost savings that you found of looking at um, the v what is going on with vSAN with VMware versus some other options that we analyzed in there. Um, some of that big stuff came in administrative costs as well as hardware, you know, savings in hard costs, which would be hardware and support, which most a lot of people, those are the primary things that they look at. When you did the analysis, where did you find what I call the pressure points in this analysis? That is, what are the things that really made kind of the bigger difference between um, one item, one concept versus another concept approach? Yeah, so our modeling was looking at um, VMware vSAN and specifically compared to uh, traditional fiber channel SAN array. Um, so like you said, we found, you know, around a 30% cost advantage overall. Um, and then, you know, as, as you pointed out, the hardware and the support costs were a big factor in that. Um, you know, one kind of explanation there is um, vSAN's ability to, to leverage lower cost commodity hardware um, versus these more proprietary solutions. Uh, where typically the support costs are, are really high. Um, another thing that was pretty interesting was we took a pretty in-depth look at the operational costs, and we actually found around a 76% cost advantage there. Um, so what we did was we looked at um, who needs to be involved, uh, what the tasks were to uh, maintain these systems over time, and how frequently they need to be done. Uh, so for vSAN, we're really looking at a VM admin uh, and the solution had lots of different management simplicity built into it that could kind of reduce um, the the time that was required overall. On the other hand, uh, in the you know fiber channel SAN environment, uh, it required both the VM admin and an additional uh, storage admin. Um, so you're getting you know a requirement of more resources, uh, more time. Um, that all adds up into you know more operational costs. Um, and as I was you know talking about before, you know, these this operational cost is something that um, adds on to itself over time and accumulates. Um, and then one last piece that's kind of interesting is um, after we modeled these costs, we we looked at how they're distributed over time. So we found that uh, a lot of the cost advantage was coming in years one and years two. Um, 
really because the the same environment required really high upfront costs with the hardware and the support and all that. Um, so that gives kind of two advantages to vSAM. Um, it provides a little bit more financial flexibility, you know, over this stretch of time. And then two, if you if you kind of um, imagine into the future of year six when you do inevitably need um, this refresh, um, you have this this really high cost once again. Um, right up front, whereas in vSAN, you can add much more granularly and you, you don't incur this, this high upfront cost. Yeah, and if I could recall correctly, we did um, internally on the administrative piece of it is the the, the uh, Signal 6.5 lab, set those systems up in our lab, uh, lab room, setting them and running through the, the parameters or the operational environments as we've seen um, people having to do. So it's something that's it's not just taking you know information from other people, but it's actually our hands-on work. Um, so John, I'm gonna skip over to you. The last question we have is, how can solutions really lower capital and operation Cost. You are like down in the trenches, I know, with, with the technology, et cetera. So what are the things that have gone on that you guys have done to really lower those, those areas, drop the costs? So VSAN itself has a number of technologies that help you lower that the capital and the operational costs. Um, on the, you know, some of it are things like just data efficiencies, compression, thin provisioning, unmap, you know, the how we lay out the data. Some of them also, when you look at capital, there's something I like to talk about called server-side economics, to where when you go and buy drives in a server and you go and buy the same drive next year, it'll probably get cheaper. Um, and you know, drives get bigger, they get denser. And I was actually just looking at drives today and looking at how far the prices are continuing to fall, looking at it, you know, just regular NVMe server class drives. We have different options of them going from the mixed use to the read intensive, some of some different options in terms of performance tiering and lower costs. So maybe going from the 33% cents per gigabyte um, enterprise class mixed use down to a data center class. Um, uh, read intensive drive that's you know near half that cost. We're seeing the just the the commodity um, silicon costs go down. And the other thing also from an operational cost, this is it's very easy to train someone to become a vCN administrator who's already a VMware administrator. They're familiar with the existing tooling, the vCenter server uh, capabilities, the performance services. They're already rich in there, and you end up comparing this against an external array, which I was a storage admin. I, I to deploy to manage them for a living. And you often end up with kind of a weird bubble skill cost problem there to where at small scale, those activities, you do them so rarely that even if you try to dump them onto one person, there's a high cost of entering and going in and out of all those different interfaces very intermittently. Or at scale, you now have to have dedicated teams, dedicated skill set, dedicated sand management tooling. Um, and, and, you know, just from a, you know, lowering, the, not only lowering those costs, but a cost transparency and, and understanding those costs. If I'm buying hyperconverged infrastructure, um, or I'm buying kind of a you know a storage only cluster, you know with vSAN here, I'm buying servers. I can bid those out. They're fairly easy to understand the component costs. I'm buying the software. I understand that. I can buy those together as a common unit, have a common refresh cycle on all my hardware. I'm kind of done. Pretty easy. If I'm going with an external SAN with a dedicated storage fabric, I have to account for the life cycle of my server which I might run anywhere from you know four to seven years. I have that storage platform that I might run from three to five years. And then I have the fabric where its own life cycle and refresh. Next year is actually 2025, mark it on your calendars, everyone, is a super cycle and, and fiber channel refreshes. Most of the Gen 5 systems out there are going into life and to support, you're gonna have to go buy new. And so trying to track this Gantt chart of these multiple different systems that each have their own software and hardware refresh cycles and handle those, um, not only is it lower cost to do HCI, but it's just simpler. I'm not having to track all these extra line items and predict what their costs and what each interval are. And if I want to get off that roller coaster, now I have to get out of this entire ecosystem versus with my, you know, with vSAN and, H and hyperconverged infrastructure and storage only clusters here, um, I'm just buying regular servers. They're pretty predictable. Intel is going to come out with a new CPU every, you know, 18 months. Um, the drives will just keep getting faster and better. It, it's a good life. <laughs> and I love your enthusiasm, John. Well, that's about as much time as we have. Um, there is a link to the report. Please go download it because it's got lots of details about in, in some summary papers so you can do a quick scan. But if you want to go into how how all the gory details got put together, there is all of that in the appendix as well to, to go plow through. So thank you very much, John and Tom and Mitch. 
Um, and we'll see you again on the 6-5 on the road sometime. Oh, 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 oh